Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. January 4th, Peter Marshall. As a young man in Scotland, Peter believed he had been called to be a missionary, but he didn't have the education or the money to get it. So he immigrated to the United States. I worked hard for long hours, he said. I dug ditches. I wielded spade and shovel. I was unemployed. So he relocated to Alabama, where he joined a church, became the president of its young people's group, taught men's Bible class, and got ready for seminary. In seminary, Peter learned about preaching with a sanctified imagination. He explained it to a classmate. What we need to do is take a passage of Scripture and so carefully and accurately reconstruct the context of it that the scene comes to life. We see it first for ourselves. Then we take our listeners to the spot in our imagination. We make them see and hear what happened so vividly that the passage will live forever in their minds and hearts. Well, Peter's preaching did stir hearts. On this date, in 1947, he was elected chaplain of the United States Senate. When obeying God tests your faith, God is always faithful. When Peter Marshall was elected chaplain of the U.S. Senate, he had already been praying in front of packed auditoriums for more than 15 years. His spontaneous conversations with God had inspired entire congregations in the same way as his word picture sermons. But for the convenience of the Senate's official reporters, this new position required that Marshall write out his prayers ahead of time. No more spontaneous conversations with God. How could he be authentic? if he had to write out and read his prayers in place of simply talking to God. He had never done that for anyone else. Marshall knew God had opened this door for him to minister to the country's leaders, and so he had to find a way to work through his own discomfort. He went to a close friend and asked for his advice. So you're afraid God can't direct a prayer that has to be composed ahead of time? Is that it? His friend challenged him. Well, yes, that was the issue, although it sounds a little lame when you put it that way. His friend responded, well, let's ask God to write those prayers through you then. Together they prayed and asked God to be the author of the prayers for the benefit of the Senate. It didn't take long for God to answer Marshall. He settled into his routine of writing out his Senate prayers a couple of days ahead of time. One morning, Marshall entered the Senate chamber and read his prepared prayer. This is what he prayed. Gracious Father, we thy children, so often confused, live at cross purposes in our central aims, and hence we are at cross purposes with each other, he began. Take us by the hand and help us to see things from thy viewpoint. After he finished and left the chamber, a senator caught him in the corridor and offered an apology for his behavior. Marshall had no idea what had sparked the man's contrition. Only later did he discover that the night before, after heated debate over the nomination of the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, this senator and another one came close to blows. And on that very next morning, Marshall's prayer spoke into the current conflict and led them to repentance. Marshall's pre-written prayers spoke into immediate situations several more times during his service as chaplain, but they also served another purpose. When he first began opening Senate sessions in prayer, few senators were actually on the floor or even paying attention while he was praying. But as he continued believing that God was in those typed prayers, Marshall saw a change. Senators chose to be present for the prayer. Page boys and reporters made a point to be there too, and so did visitors in the gallery. The power of God was evident. Marshall continued to pray to his commander-in-chief, as he liked to refer to God, and God continued to reveal his presence to others 
and to grow Marshall some faith. But if any of you lacks wisdom, James 1.5 tells us, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach. Is there any area of your life in which God is asking you to trust and obey him? Are you willing to do so even if it makes you feel uncomfortable? When obeying God tests our faith, God is always faithful. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.